Well, tomorrow morning, we may wake up a little bit more refreshed. That's because at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, daylight saving time officially ends. That's right. Our clocks fall back an hour, and in theory, you should be able to get a bit more rest. But a new study suggests it may not be that simple. Joining us now to talk about that is CBS News medical contributor, Dr. Celine Gounder. She is also the editor-at-large for public health at KFF Health News. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here, Dr. Gounder. So this this study is interesting because it looked at the sleep data of almost 12,000 people in the UK. Remind us, first of all, what is the purpose of daylight saving time and what did this new study find? So the purpose of daylight saving time is really to maximize the evening sunlight hours, especially in the summer where you have longer days. Uh, it's not really saving time, it's just really shifting when you have the daylight hours. Now, with this particular study out of the UK, what they found was that after fall back or spring forward, that, uh, well, I should say uh, fall back in particular, uh, people are not really maximizing the full use of that extra hour of sleep. They're not. They're not. Oh. So they're only getting maybe another half hour of sleep. Mm. And this could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they're actually staying up later. Uh, maybe they are just for whatever reason, have other things going on, you know, kids, jobs, et cetera, that get in the way of taking advantage of that extra hour. And one of the things we discuss uh, every year when this comes around is preparing your kids for the, the change. Um, and, and that may be one of the reasons you're talking about. But also, I mean, we're human. And oftentimes, if we think about the fact that we're going to have an extra hour of sleep, we really give ourselves an extra hour to stay up. <laughs> what are the warnings sort of against doing that? Well, it does make it hard harder potentially to adjust to the time. Um, what you really want to be doing is taking advantage of the fact that you do have that extra hour because there is going to be an adjustment over the coming week with your sleep-wake cycle. Uh, so for some people it's easier if you do a little bit at a time, so maybe 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. a day over four to five days if you have the flexibility to do something like that. Uh, some of the other advice we give is um, avoid things like caffeine and alcohol before bed. It'll also help you reset your clock a little bit better that way too. So it's interesting as well going back to that study because it was an interesting finding about the rest yes. of the week, right? So how did clock changes basically affect people's sleep during the rest of the week, not just that night after? Right, so this was seen with both uh, spring forward and fall back time changes that men actually slept more during the week after the time change. Women slept less. And we don't know, is this a biological difference? Is this, again, women may have more in the way of childcare uh, issues that they're attending to, that mm -hmm. they're juggling more between what's going on at home and at work. We don't entirely know why that difference. Mm. So uh, you mentioned what not to do, caffeine, alcohol, before bed during this sort of transition time. What kinds of things can you do to help yourself adjust slowly. You mentioned uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes at a time, but what are some ways to make yourself restful when your body may be uh, expecting something? Yeah. Different? Well, one other thing I want to flag that you should not do is screens before bed because mm. you're basically shining bright lights in your eyes, which is tricking you into thinking it's still daylight. In terms of things that you can do to help you adjust better, um, being out in natural light uh, really helps to signal to your brain you know, that these are daylight hours. Exercise on that Sunday after the um, fall back is also very helpful as well. And um, just very quickly, we know that medical professionals do agree, though, on this. They actually want to get rid of daylight saving time altogether, right? Why? What kind of effect do these clock changes have on our bodies? Well, we do see an increased risk of heart attack, abnormal heart rhythms, stroke, car accidents, even depression. Um, there was a move back in the 1970s to make daylight saving time permanent. Uh, and what we saw was there were a rash of kids being hit by cars. We don't know if it was causal, but that really made the change unpopular. Now, doctors would actually recommend making standard time uh, permanent in terms of the health effects and it being uh, better aligned with your normal circadian rhythm. Yeah, and the sun, right? Because the sunlight, that, that really is what determines or helps determine exactly. that circadian rhythm. Exactly. Really good information. Some good advice. We will try to not do other things yeah. so we can <laughs> Don't stay out late partying. Okay, all right, all right, if you I, say I so. I won't drink a cup of coffee right before I finish. <laughs> That's right. You Do have, I, I promise. Yes, Dr. Celine Gounder, thank you so much Thanks. for being My with pleasure. us. We appreciate it. And don't forget to set those clocks back an hour tonight. Very important. We'll be right back. <laughs>